This video was brought to you by Brilliant. A couple of years ago, we made a video called How Netflix is Killing Itself. And at the time, that really did seem to be true, as the once dominant platform seems to be making error after unforced error. Today, though, that couldn't be further from the truth. In the company's latest earnings call last week, they announced that they had 283 million paid subscribers, up 5 million from the last quarter, plus more watch time in the Nielsen Top 10 than all of the other streaming services combined. Now, that success could explain why the company's stock price is up 60% so far year to date, and why they now have a market cap of over $300 billion. That's more than Disney, Sony, Warner Brothers Discovery, Fox, and Paramount combined. That is to say, Netflix is huge, and the success only seems to be growing, with this year likely to be their most successful non-pandemic year. But this success isn't impenetrable. Even at their very successful earnings call last week, they still face some difficult questions. Questions which could prove problematic for the company going forward. So let's discuss Netflix's bounce back and the three problems which could yet haunt their future. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Before we get into the challenges facing Netflix, let's quickly reflect on how they've bounced back since that video we made in 2022. The first notable decision Netflix made was the introduction of a cheaper ad-supported plan, a move that opened up the platform to an even wider audience, particularly price-conscious viewers who had never tried Netflix or whose subscription had lapsed. Secondly, they cracked down hard on password sharing. Now, this obviously led to a boost in subscribers, as unauthorized users were no longer able to piggyback on their friends' accounts, resulting in millions of new official users, many of whom opted for the new ad tier. After all, if they were used to free Netflix, paying full price was likely too large a jump. Finally, they also continued their content investment, with major shows like Wednesday, Monster, Stranger Things, Bridgerton, and The Crown captivating audiences with new seasons in the last couple of years. Combined, this strategy made Netflix essentially unavoidable. Even if you didn't want to pay, even if you'd been kicked off a friend's account, Netflix positioned themselves as both cheap enough and necessary enough to boost profitability, signups, and watch time, even if you now had to sit through some adverts. So that's how Netflix finds itself at the top of the media pile today. But that doesn't mean that they're going to stay there forever, with challenges in advertising, content, and bundles all threatening Netflix's house of cards. Now, we might have spent the last couple of minutes praising Netflix's ad-supported model, but things aren't perfect in this regard. Because while the move has shown some early signs of success, with ad tier memberships jumping 35% quarter over quarter, the company acknowledges that advertising won't become a major growth driver until 2026. That's in part because, while Netflix has a ton of subscribers, the vast majority are still on the ad-free plans. As such, Netflix doesn't have all that much inventory to sell to advertisers, especially when compared to established players like Amazon and Hulu, who have a significant head start in the ad space. And Amazon is playing the game particularly hard here. Unlike Netflix, who introduced an ad-supported tier below the price of their standard memberships, Amazon decided to automatically convert all of their existing subscribers into ad-supported subscribers, only removing adverts for those who actively chose to pay more. This gave them millions of ad-supported subscribers overnight, allowing them to leverage this new massive consumer base and their existing e-commerce expertise to aggressively pursue advertising dollars, putting downward pressure on ad rates across the industry. Yep, that's right. Amazon suddenly created so much advertising inventory that supply is outstripping demand in the premium video ad market. And other companies, including Netflix, are actually complaining that the price that they charge for adverts is dropping as a result. That's not the only issue that Netflix faces either. They've also got a talent and content issue. Now, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Netflix does still have a ton of content, and they also have a ton of money to spend on new content. However, money isn't the only factor at play here, especially when it comes to movies. Now, Netflix's focus on direct-to-consumer streaming certainly has disrupted the traditional film industry, bypassing theatrical releases and prioritizing home viewing. 
However, this strategy has simultaneously created friction with actors, directors, and filmmakers, all of whom still value the cultural impact and prestige associated with theatrical releases. This tension was actually highlighted recently when Netflix reportedly offered $150 million for Margot Robbie's Wuthering Heights film, only to be turned down. Margot Robbie and the filmmaker Emerald Fennell are said to be prioritizing theatrical release, suggesting that Netflix may need to offer even more lucrative deals in order to secure top-tier projects if they really do want to stick to at-home viewing exclusively. During a recent earnings call, Netflix's CEO reiterated, we are in the subscription streaming business, apparently frustrated by the persistent questions about Netflix's lack of theatrical releases. He emphasized the company's ability to provide filmmakers with a massive global audience. But some insiders do still argue that Netflix's model undermines the unique experience and impact of theatrical releases. If this tension continues, Netflix could well be forced to pay over the odds for future movie projects, something they won't be keen to do especially if it also increases tension between Hollywood and the streaming giant. Thirdly and finally, Netflix also faces the challenge of bundling. Competitors like Disney and Warner Brothers Discovery are increasingly offering discounted packages that combine multiple streaming services, a strategy designed to lure in new consumers with a greater value and convenience, as well as locking them in with a more diversified content offering. Now, Netflix has long disliked this model, and their co-CEO Ted Sarandos dismissed it as old media models employed by competitors with narrow scope and limited engagement. However, analysts suggest that bundles could actually pose a significant threat to Netflix's dominance if rivals manage to create a compelling offering. While Netflix has so far resisted full-fledged bundles, the company has participated in limited partnerships with distributors like Verizon and Comcast, offering its ad-supported tier as part of broader packages. So they may well be edging closer to this sort of model. Ultimately, despite being the dominant force in streaming right now, Netflix's journey is far from over. The company faces significant challenges, from competition in advertising and bundling to navigating the complex world of theatrical releases. However, with a strong brand, massive subscriber base, and commitment to innovation, Netflix is well positioned to adapt and thrive in the years to come. In fact, as a major leader and innovator in the space, these issues may just as well provide unique opportunities for a cash-rich and tech-forward company like Netflix, opportunities that the more established brands might still be too afraid of. Now, what's something that the TODR audience have in common? well, they're willing to learn something new every day. And while our videos are a pretty good start, a lot of the stuff we talk about can seem pretty complicated, especially when we dive into analytics and detailed data. Luckily, there's a fun and easy way to learn more, which doesn't cost thousands of dollars or take years of schooling. That's because Brilliant is the best way to learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in maths, data analysis, programming, and AI. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving, broken down into accessible chunks designed around your busy schedule. That means that by spending just a few minutes a day, you can accumulate new knowledge over time in an actually fun way. And you'll feel the satisfaction that comes with bettering yourself and staying ahead. For instance, perhaps you promised yourself that this year you'll learn more programming skills, but you've just not had enough time and the year's now coming to an end. Brilliant's growing number of programming courses are a great way to build the foundations and learn real-world applications with courses on Python, essential coding elements like loops and variables, and even developing your mind to think like a programmer. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash TLDR or scan the QR code on screen. Or you can just click the link in the description. That way you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks for your support, and thanks for watching TLDR.